really, really nothing but positive things to say. Dubai, you're crazy, but I love you. We recently visited the UAE, and I'm still not really sure what to think of this place. It's big and beautiful and clean and safe and amazing. It's perfumes and the people are amazing and friendly, and traditions go back more or less as far as we have recorded history for. And yet, maybe because of that, it almost feels like it's a region that's still trying to work out who it wants to be when it grows up. You know, I almost feel like, welcome to Arrakis. And we're in. Simple as that. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> welcome aboard. You just arrived. We boarded the MSC Opry in Abu Dhabi. We found that this was a really good way to see a number of different cities around the United Arab Emirates. Each night you would basically go to sleep and wake up in a different port. Um, we were due to go to one of the smaller islands, uh, however due to high seas we ended up in Dubai and got another night in Dubai. This actually turned out to be quite fortuitous as um, I'd really wanted to go to the global village, especially the global village at night time. And it was looking like we weren't going to have enough time to make it out there. Um, but because of that extra night in Dubai, uh, it happened, which was amazing. It was actually uh, probably one of my favorite places that we hit in Dubai. Almost. I'll do another video all about the cruise ship but for now just understand that we were on a cruise traveling from city to city each night dubai takes it to 11 every single time so we were due to go out on one of the islands uh siri yas i believe it is for a island safari but as circumstance would have it we had three meter swells and the uh, the port was closed so that actually ended up being pretty lucky for us because I really wanted to do the global village really wanted to do the global village at night time and this gave us that opportunity so let's get some food and let's get global baby <laughs> ticket prices were about 30 dirham in Australia, you're looking at about $12.50, or I guess US, that's maybe $9. Um, I think that's super well worth it. Great value. I mean, seriously, look at this place. Look at this place. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> one for you, or three for you. Either one is fine. You're like, I'm not You're on my horse. Lucky horse. Stallion, baby. Stallion. Uh, Dubai you have some crazy rules so yet again it's happened that they've said not allowed to have with microphone on it um, the microphone on this camera is actually pretty good depending, you know, especially if I'm here like this so we're just gonna do this subtly found myself saying that phrase quite a bit in Dubai. Oh wow. Global Village is a mixture of different markets and different places to eat. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis on the food out there, the glowing markets. There's a main stage there with a full-on concert. We stopped and watched um, maybe two of the different performers for, for a small amount of time. There was fireworks. Like I keep coming back to it. Everything Dubai does, Dubai takes it to 11. <laughs> One of the world's simple pleasures. Potato on a stick. Okay, could be a little bit better. A little bit longer. Bobinka? Potato on a stick?
USA. This was a full on concert. This band was incredible. Kind of a blend of Irish, Indian and Arab all in one. And although you'd never think that combination would work out well, you can hear just how well it did work. The band was full on high energy, high intensity. And another thing I loved, they weren't afraid to interact with the audience, to stop and have a chat about the inspirations and, and where that particular song came from. It was a full on concert, as good as some as I'd paid for, <laughs> and a lot of the audience took it as a bit of a dance party, myself included. Thank you so much. Are you having a good time? This was another one of these random stage shows. These were literally all over the village. As you'd be walking through, many of the countries would show off their cultural dances and songs. So, here we have a Fahet taco. You're a gum? Find one of these little bad boys out. This is like a, um, I guess a Lebanese taco. It's got like vine leaf, yogurt, crispy Arabic bread. It's like a... That way, so I can see how it looks inside the block. It's like a blind leaf in a taco with like a heap of Arabic flavors yogurt, pomegranate, syrup. I think it's rich and I'm gonna struggle, but. What mm. mad genius came up with that? Global Village is one of those places I barely heard about before we went to Dubai. I do recommend it. Actually, it's one of the one of the best things that we did out there. I'd also recommend going at night time, as there was a definite atmosphere there that can't be overlooked. You go there hungry and with more than a bit of change. Although entry was pretty reasonable, our food there wasn't cheap. A little bit less than the average Dubai prices, but still, by my standards, not exactly friendly on the pocket. Either way, well worth going out there. Pace yourself when you're actually trying to find what you want to eat, because there is so much to choose from. Next up, we did a city tour of Dubai, both the old and the new city. We did have a somewhat of a problem with the tour company that we chose. I won't go into any details, uh, but the one thing that we did want to do and, and kind of make clear there is we actually wanted to go to the top of the Burj Khalif. Somehow this didn't happen, uh, hence whilst our driver was lovely, I won't in all good consciousness be recommending this company as a tour group. Uh, that said, enjoy the views of the city. Amazing old heritage building, you know, untouched for several decades. Beautiful woodwork, and it's a Starbucks. Hamster, gonna have a smile. Lovely lady. So we are currently in the old part of Dubai. And this sort of shows how it was back in the day. The structure, the markets, and you can kind of imagine not much has changed in the last, you know, you said 40 odd years. You can sort of see a time not that long ago 
paper, it would have been all the same. It's funny, I kept getting distracted here. Um, people would talk to you or you would see something very pretty. I love to think that not much has changed, that these markets have been going on in a fairly similar fashion for 40 years. Similar artwork, similar carpets, similar spices. Now obviously these markets cater a lot more for the tourists than they ever did in the past, but you kind of get that, that feeling that if we were back in time 40 years, they'd be a little bit more busy, a little bit more hectic, a little bit more catered towards shops and living than they are, you know, tourist trinkets. But the structure, the shops, the people, the clothing, more or less the same. This is one of the royal palaces that you get reasonably close to. The grounds, the gardens, the beautiful mosaic tiles. It was quite funny. There was a, um, a set of cards in that jeep that you see in front of us. And every 30 seconds you would hear them beep the horn and look at someone and tell them, no, you can't come any closer. And then the person would look at the guards like, oh, like I didn't realize, I'm so sorry. 30 seconds later it would happen again. 30 seconds later it would happen again, 30 seconds later it would happen again. I also thought this would be an amazing place to put the drone up as some of the tile work that we're walking on is just magnificent, but that would be highly, highly illegal. Um, Dubai has some pretty strict laws on drones, they have changed several times over the last 24 months. I decided not to risk it and I didn't even bring it. Like even the gold trimmings here. Yeah, I don't even know if it's real gold, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was. Seriously, look at these lamp posts. The gold filigree. These are apparently waiting rooms. So the sheik comes out there, strolls on over to his mosque, does his prayer, and off he goes. Good to be the king. So this mosque that you're looking at is apparently the sheik's I won't say personal mosque, but it's the one that he prays at daily. Obviously you're not allowed access there as a tourist. Delegates or people with meetings will wait over in those waiting rooms when appropriate. The sheik will go over, say his prayers, and um, come back and be able to meet with dignitaries or delegates when required. In the background you can see the Dubai frame. It sort of separates old Dubai from new Dubai. We did stop in at the base of it and apparently you can go up it and there's stuff inside. We we honestly didn't bother going up there. But it is it is quite beautiful and as I've said many times, Dubai does grand. So also, fun little tidbit here, for reasons unknown. 
My wife seemed to not be able to see the frame. I would point it out. Oh, hey, Bob, there's the frame. And she would be, where? Where? Just there. This became a running theme, a running joke for us. Next stop, Arrakis. I mean dunes. I mean the desert. Next stop, we went out to the desert. So we're out here in the desert, just past Dubai. Apparently we're not actually in Dubai because there's no proper deserts left in Dubai. Uh, where did we say we were? Dubai West. Dubai West. <laughs> and we are in the desert. Here we have the opportunity to go sand dune riding. We will be shortly doing some fall driving in the desert and um, basically tearing around like mad things is the plan. Hamster. With the sensible desert footwear. Mother in law slightly better. This is another thing that Dubai, actually, the entire United Arab Emirates is doing. They're changing the desert. Like this is literally some dune level stuff. This is the desert. They've done this through water. Take water from the ocean, go through desalinization, and turn it from that into that. This is another thing I love about Dubai. I don't think they even checked that I had a license of any way, shape or form to get on here. Um, whether you were male or female, could drive. They definitely didn't ask if I had any experience on motorbikes or all-terrain vehicles. Um, P.S. I have had a motorbike license since I was... Oh, 16. I've been on and off bikes most of my life. In many cases, I think that counted against me to start with for these things. You can see me trying to steer it like a motorbike, like leaning over to one side. And with these things, it's kind of not about that at all. You drive them in a similar way to which you drive a car with the steering wheel, or in this case, with the steering handlebars. So it took me, oh, a couple of laps to be confident I wasn't going to hit anyone or anything. You can see me coming up to that tree with some trepidation there. That said, after those few laps, yeah, we were fanging. Right about this point, I'm wondering if I can actually get the thing sideways, and also wondering if my mother in law would appreciate that.
in the place's defense. They did tell me to slow down once or twice, as well as a few other people that were a little bit bold. Maybe too bold. adventure took us out into the desert proper in one of these four drives. Guys, I will say having a good driver here is essential, not only for safety, but a good driver knows how to push it. Our driver, when we looked across at him, was cool, calm and collected. My mother-in-law and my wife were squealing with glee and delight in the back, and every once in a while I'd look over and I'd see our driver, just this small little knowing grin on his face. Also, all the four-wheel drives have roll cages, so if the worst did happen, you are pretty safe. This was an amazing experience. I know I keep using that word so much for Dubai. It was amazing, because it really was. Guys, I will leave a link to the company that we went with and the driver's name down below. My recommendation is, ask for him directly like I'm not sponsored by this company um, we just had such a fantastic time with them that I really want to endorse them um, and this guy was was genuine honest and just just a champion to hang out with So apparently four wheel drives getting stuck in the dunes is not terribly uncommon. And I tell you, this speaks volumes about our driver and, and the Arab people in general. We were talking about this, about four wheel drives getting stuck on the way back. And I've asked him, have you been stuck before? And he said, yeah, yeah, it's happened to me, but not for a while. And I jokingly said, oh, in Australia, if your mate gets stuck, you know, the price to get him out is usually a six pack or maybe a carton of beer, depending on how, how stuck he is. And I've asked, you know, do you guys have something similar like that in your country? And for those that are not Australian here, you can buy a lot with a carton of beer. A carton of beer is currency for every favor you've ever needed in your life from a mate. Help me move? Sure, here's a carton of beer. Need something done? No matter what the value? Yeah, sure mate, carton of beer. So, I was trying to explain this concept to our driver and he couldn't get it. No, your friend is stuck. You help them out. No, you see a stranger in need of help. You help them out, there's no cost. And I kept trying to explain, oh no, it's, it's more of a game we play with Australians. It's, it's, it's not about the value of it. It's, you know, thanks mate, appreciate it. And as I say, it speaks volumes to the nature of these people that, no, there's no cost. You just help them out. I think that comes from the hard lifestyle of the desert that that's been ingrained into the culture 
If you see someone stuck, you help them. This, uh, this random person that was out here with one of the companies just felt like showing my mother-in-law Oman. Um, so he's walked us up to the to the top of the mountain, or the top of the, the dune here, and pointed out the mountain range that was Oman. Um, and again, I'll point out this guy. We never met him. He didn't ask for anything. He just thought it was beautiful, and he wanted to show us. Um, we have a full video coming up in Oman. Uh, we spent a day or two there. That... <laughs> I'm going to say it again. That was amazing. Um, Oman probably was one of my favorite places. It was probably the, the favorite place that we visited there. Included in our package was a camel ride. We basically got on the camel, it walked about 10 meters, guy took it in a circle, and walked it back. Camel sat down, we got off. I'm not criticizing this, it was fun and it was an experience. After June bashing, we were treated to some traditional desert entertainment. Um, we were actually in the VIP section. And guys, I don't usually say do this or do that or spend money here or not. I will tell you, the VIP section was just a couple of extra dollars, maybe 10 or 20 dollars per person more. It was so much better. Food was basically available when we wanted it. I think for the non-VIP section, food was only available after the second performance. Ours was available the entire time. It was an exquisite buffet range. We had people coming around making sure we, we were happy and got what we needed. We got a shisha, we got some wine, a bottle of wine there for drastically overpriced. Um, there was blankets available. The there was VIP bathrooms, these were evidently quite a bit cleaner, and not only that, there was just no queue um, waiting for them. Basically best seats in the house, um, and for, for really not very much extra money. As you can see, this buffet is extensive. Most of it's flame cooked uh, or open flame grill. There is an enormous section for vegetarians um, and enough to keep meat eaters happy as well. Breads, salads, desserts, samosas. You name it, it had it. I reckon this place was probably the best food we ate in the entire United Arab Emirates. This is Muhammad. Muhammad is awesome. I did actually do a recording of us sampling some of the food here. However, by that stage it was pretty dark and you can't really see what I'm eating or the reactions there. Um, I'll just tell you, it was great. Everything that we got from this buffet was just fantastic.
the Sufi Muslims are famous for their spiritualism, their tolerance, and the whirling, this whirling dervish followers of this school of Islamic practice engage in this form of prayer that requires the faithful to spin until they've reached this kind of religious ecstasy. I'm told that these these spinning dervishes, these prayers, can go on for hours and hours. One of the philosophies or the perspective here is that the spinning demonstrates the world and it begins at a certain point, spins and spins and then ends up in this same spot. Hence the, the movement, the circularity of it all. At some point, the dancer raises his right arm while pointing his left arm down, representing the earth and the heavens becoming one. And then the rhythm rises, the whirling increases, and the dancer starts taking off the, the traditional garment. Whoa. And with the last, he makes this into the appearance of a newborn child, indicating the beginning of creation, fertility. So, fun fact here, belly dancing believed to date back to around 300 years before Christ out of Egypt. Although within the prehistory cave paintings of Adora, believed to be at least 12,000 years old, there are engravings which have been interpreted as belly dancing, so the history of this dance may go back even further. I'm not even going to try and give you historical references of the first time a person used fire for entertainment or to spin it. I reckon the first time a caveman lit a fire, some other caveman walked up to him and said, Here, hold my beer. Yep, these guys were awesome.
Goodbye, you're crazy and I love you. <laughs> this was an awesome day out, an awesome adventure. Everything about this adventure was well thought out and well planned. Um, again, I can't recommend this company enough. This is 30 years in the making so far. In another 50 years, this changes the entire ecosystem of the plant, of the environment. Okay. Especially if they leave water like that. Especially if they leave water like that. Do you mean here? Or do you mean- I need to make the big impact. That's what she said. Theo's famous last wall words in the door. Theo's famous last words in the Dubai Mall. Baby, this place is tiny. How could we possibly get lost? Tempting fate. Okay, so what do you want to do? I want you to hold. I want you to point. I want you to make me a star. Hmm. My wife has a disability. Send money now. There exists a certain type of hamster that has the inability to see large architectural shapes in the shape of a frame. Send money now so that we can fund research for this horrible, horrible, ow, debilitating disease. <laughs> Guys, if you have made it this far in the video, maybe you will like some of our other works. So go ahead and hit that like button. It does help the algorithm find us more than you can imagine. Go ahead and hit that subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.